it's Mark Podolsky, the land geek with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's round table podcast, we've got Jeannie, the go-giver Morum. Hi, Jeannie. Hi. We got Tate. I love it when you call me big papa. Litchfield, what's up, Tate? Oh, not much. Everything's that's, good. That's great. That's great. And of course, we've got Eric, the technician. Peterson. What's up, Eric? Not much. Just hanging out with you guys. And uh, hopefully he won't be hibernating this winter. Bearland Aaron Williams. Bearland, how are you? Hey, doing well. Glad to hang out with all my friends here. Awesome. And last but not least, your favorite Sherpa, the brain, the professor, Six Sigma. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net landmodo.com and most importantly if you're not automating your craigslist and your facebook postings posting domination.com forward slash the land geek scott todd how are you mark i'm great how are you i am a wounded warrior um i don't want to go too much into detail and bore our listeners about my almost very tragic bike accident that i 100 percent blame on tate because Tate got me into biking and if it weren't for Tate, I probably would have been on some type of Peloton or something, but no, Tate's like, get outside, get some fresh air. I already broke my arm or my, what did I break Tate the first time? Oh, uh, I don't remember. It wasn't that big of a deal. I broke something <laughs> and then, uh, that's okay. And then last week, um, I have like third degree burns. Um, I know it could have been really bad anyways. Not a big deal. The hand surgeon said that I should forgive and forget and not worry about Tate anymore. <laughs> Good. I'm but, glad. Uh, the, I'm going to surgeon and all that. Yeah. See, yeah, it's, look, it's, and you should consider flying. No, I know. But then I'd be in any kind of, you know, that's the thing is like, if there's a, a flight accident with me, I won't be alive to even blame you. Even jokingly. So, no, no. Don't worry about it, Mark. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. So we've got a really good topic this week for the panel. I'm going to let Bearland Aaron take it away and lead us off. Bearland? Okay. Well, we talk a lot about um, these choke points that happen in a business, and sometimes they're yourself, and how can you get yourself out of the way um, you know, because money loves speed and <clears throat> we want to keep things rolling. But what happens when that choke point is out of your control? In fact, it's at the county. Um, you know, like what if the assessor is a month behind on assessing the properties and your county requires that the property owner be the person who pays the taxes? Um, and then in the meantime, maybe you've sold the property already. So now you're just waiting on this big backlog of the assessor needs to assess the property to me. And then I have to pay my taxes, which means I have to send them, a, you know, certified funds through the mail and everything else. And, you know, in the meantime, you have a customer waiting on their property, you know, wanting a deed and you can't, you know, you got to wait. What do you do? How do you grease the wheels or can you do anything? Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good point. Um, Jeannie, has this ever happened to you where a deal was slowed down because of the county? You know, honestly, no. In fact, I'm going to be taking notes today because, no, I haven't had that experience yet. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Tate, have you had this experience? Um, not in recent time. I, I guess for me, this is something that I look into in the county research phase. Um, when I'm selecting a new area is, Hey, what are my workarounds or is this a County where property taxes need to be paid by the owner? What, you know, what can I predict in these situations? But, um, you know, my, my only is pick up that phone and just beg, say, please help me out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's always a very good strategy. Um, is the bag and plead. Um, but there might be, there might be more creative strategy. Uh, Eric, what about you besides begging and pleading? First of all, have you ever had, had the County slow down a deal for you? And then second, what would be your strategy to 
get her done? So I, I don't know that um, I've ever been in that situation where it's stopping a deal. Um, though I remember early on uh, buying property in an area where um, essentially at one point in the year for, I don't remember if it's four weeks or six weeks or what it is, but um, they won't actually allow you to pay the property taxes that are due because they're going through their auction process or tax lien process or whatever. And um, they won't, they won't let you give them money, which is completely ridiculous. But, um, but I do remember doing that and just having to wait. Um, if I had a property that I was trying to sell and that was the issue, I couldn't, couldn't pay the taxes because, you know, the assessor hadn't caught up to the recorder yet um, or the treasurer hadn't caught up to the recorder. Um, you know, first of all, I'd be trying to show them that deed, you know, that I have a copy of saying, look, it's recorded. I want to pay these taxes. I understand your system doesn't show it, but you know, I'd have those kind of conversations. But beyond that, if I couldn't solve it that way, um, you know, I would just work out something with the buyer that essentially is a guarantee that I'm going to take care of those taxes just as soon as I'm able to, um, you know, just add an addendum to the end of the contracts and, you know, I'm responsible for X amount in taxes for, you know, this period of time. And uh, gosh, I think that, that if you put something like that in the, in the paperwork that, you know, most buyers would be pretty comfortable with that, I would think. Yeah, I think that's a really great strategy because that's something you can control where the county and their backlog, you can't control. And, um, but this way, you're making your buyer feel a lot more comfortable because you're putting it in writing. And then when you can, and the county says, okay, then you do it and you fulfill your obligation contractually. Scott Todd, that's a really good answer, but just curious. Number one, have you ever had a county be a, the, the choke point on a deal? And number two, if so, how did you solve it? And if not, how would you solve it? Well, I've had counties that have kind of said, well, you got to be the owner in order to pay the property taxes. And uh, I just kind of did what Eric did here. I took my deed. I mailed it in with the check. Guess what? Money talks, baby. Because all of a sudden the cashier's check shows up along with a copy of the deed. Here's the APN numbers I'm paying off. Do you think that the county wants the money? Yeah, they want the money. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to cash the check and never think twice about it. They don't care, right? Now, if I've never had a county, like I've heard of counties, like they wouldn't take payments, which is kind of crazy, like Eric talked about. So here's what I would do is I would tell the, uh, the, the, the buyer, if I sold the property for cash and say, hey, listen, here's the situation. The county's not taking payments right now on the, the taxes. Go figure. Here's how much it is. You have two options. It's up to them. Option number one is you wait, wait until they'll take the money and then I'll uh, pay the taxes. I'll put it in writing. Like, like Eric said, put it as a denim, just write it something up here. I'll pay the taxes. Or... I'm happy to mail you a copy of the, or I'm happy to mail you the payment and you can pay the county when you, when you want, if you want. And then it's off my back, but they still got to sign that, that they're taking the payment of the taxes. Right. Uh, and then it's no longer your responsibility, but that like the county should never be a hold up, like from stopping you just keep moving. I love it. Beerland Aaron, what are your thoughts? Well, um, I've explained to my customer what's going on. You know, they understand and they're, they're patient and so forth. They're not, uh, not necessarily gonna build on this thing tomorrow, even though it was a cash sale. So, uh, you know, I had thought about possibly sending some treats of some sort to the assessor's office. Um, you know, just not mentioning the property or anything, just telling them, you know, what a great job I think they're doing and, you know, uh, you know, thanks for all the help you've given me and given us in the past. And then, um, you know, seeing how that helps, you know, and then if I have to make a call and say, Hey, you know, I just wanted to check on this property. Um, you know, they may, may remember that and may shuffle it ahead a little bit. Um, so, you know, I'm not stopping the, uh, deal flow on, or I guess the sale on this property or anything. Um, but, you know, I hadn't heard it brought up before and I, I wanted to hear everybody's opinions on, you know, this kind of thing happening. So. 
I mean, I, I, like I've, I've called the county before where they've said, hey, you know, it's, it's four, four to six weeks. And I call them up, talk to the deeds department. Remember the deeds department's your friend. Talk to the deeds department and, and tell them, hey, listen, here's the deal. I sold the property, right? Like I wasn't expecting to sell the property that fast. It's a great problem to have. Your county is fantastic. And uh, part of the rule says that, you know, that I can't pay the taxes uh, until I'm the owner. And I'm just wondering if there's any way that you can pull this book and page number that's in the county records and look at it and get it processed for me. And they've done that like, cause I've never had that problem. I've had other problems and they're like, Oh yeah, let me look. Boom. Okay. Yeah. No problem. It'll be assessed today. It'll be updated in our system tomorrow. But that said, I guarantee you that they're not going to turn away money, man. Like I've actually had a county that, that was a stickler. They're like, Hey, only the owner can pay the taxes, the back taxes. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And you know, they're, they're like, we want a driver's license or we want something. And I'm like, well, what if I don't have a driver's license? And they're like, well, as long as the cashier's check has their name on it, we're good. Okay, no problem. Here's their name. So they're not as strict in most cases. I mean, worst case scenario, you send the, the deed, you send the check, forget the snacks, send the money. That's what they want better. And then uh, worst case scenario, they mail it back to you. Yeah, you also have to be very careful with the treats um, because, you know, these are government employees and they have to be very cognizant of, you know, something that might look like a bribe, right? So the only time that I ever have sent treats and I have is I'm really super aware of it. Um, and I just send, you know, usually it was candy and it was $50 or less with a nice note. And, and that was it. And it was always at Christmas time um, because that's sort of, well, that's, that would make sense, right? But if it's in the middle of the year, um, they might be uncomfortable with it. And, you know, again, this is the problem with a government employee is they have absolutely no economic incentive to help you. They're getting paid regardless. So, but being a human being about it, like what Scott's saying always helps as well. So killing them with kindness um, can't hurt. But Jeannie, if you were going to go back and let's say you're Bearland Aaron, is there anything that you would have done differently from the start? Well, you know, I'm glad you asked because I work really mainly in one county. And so I'm calling them a lot. And I actually submitted a deed in, in the processing fees and I was short. And because we have a really good relationship, they actually processed it for me. And then what I did, they, they let me know uh, three weeks later by just sending me the original deed and, and then sent me a note. So what I did is then I wrote a check and sent it to them and wrote them a really great note and or a nice note and telling them how much I appreciate it and doing business with them because I needed to get it done and I wasn't aware that I was short. And so I have a really good relationship with them because I'm calling them. And I think, I think that's key. And I agree with you on everything you're saying, Mark. And I think a lot of times they just need to hear that they're doing a good job and you appreciate them. And I was, I was so thrilled that they processed everything for me, even though I was short, but I made up for it. I actually sent more money you know, because <laughs> if it ever happens again, I wanted them to know, hey, I'm legit. I'm not here to rip anybody off, you know, so. That's amazing. I, I mean, I've been doing this for what, 17 years now. And I have pretty good relationships with the counties to the point where like they would call me and say, Mark, you're short, oh. but they would not transfer that property until they got paid. Now they would tell me, but oftentimes like, that's amazing. I, yeah. I don't know. Gene, I have to get you do that some like magic or something. I don't know. You know what? Eric, I, I just yeah. really like working with people because I know that they have to, I depend on them. And I, I've told them that before too. I really depend on you guys to get this done because it's mine are usually always cash deals. Well, they are always cash deals. So I need them to get it done quickly. And so they've been really good to work with. That's amazing. I mean, Eric Peterson, you're like the nicest guy on the planet. Has anything like this happened to you? Where the county's like, well, because it's you, Eric, we'll go ahead and record it. And we know you're good for it. You'll send a check. No, I, I have, um, I think on maybe one occasion received a call um, saying that, you know, something was missing. But generally speaking, they just send a letter back, you know, and you got to go through the whole thing again. Um, doesn't happen very often when you use Simplify, obviously. Um, but you know, it's certain counties where you got to mail stuff in, um, that can, you can definitely run into it. 
Yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point. I mean, Tate, before you even went to that county, would you contact the county, do this sort of this county research and figure out before you even start mailing there, number one, are they simplify a county? And number two, how, how quickly can they get things done? Like, would you ask those kind of questions? We, it hasn't really come up, but I wonder if that's a, a part of county research that we're just not even thinking about. I mean, I, I've thought about it, and it's part of my process. Uh, I definitely want to make sure that the county can get things done in a reasonable time frame because I don't plan on holding any of these properties for long, right? Whether it be a cash deal, a wholesale, or a terms deal, ideally, you know, we buy property under the assumption that it's here today, gone tomorrow. So I want to know, hey, how many recorders are there in the office? Do you have more than one person who's able to do the responsibilities of the assessor if they're out of town? Is this something that can happen quickly, right? Is it a simply file friendly county? Are the documents available, right? Is there somebody who can help me when I have a question? So yeah, it's definitely something you want to look into, especially if you plan on doing a lot of business there. I think that uh, picking up the phone, establishing that relationship and that contact and that communication goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Bearline Aaron, do you th- do you look back and think, well, if I would asked some additional questions, I might have avoided this county or would it have even mattered? No, it wouldn't have mattered because I've been <clears throat> buying and selling in this county since I started this business. And generally, they're much faster. Um, just right now, for some reason, they do have a backlog. Now, I don't know why. I don't know if maybe somebody quit or it's just a busy time and the county is really, you know, getting busy as far as buying and selling goes, but generally it's not been a problem. This is the first time I've actually run into it, but it was a kind of a unique situation. So, and I have been uh, talking, uh, I'm in fact, when we're done here, I'm going to be calling the assessor's office. Um, uh, The lady wanted me to call her back because she was going to see what she could do for me. But um, I just wanted to bring it up and see what everybody had said, you know, if anybody else had experienced it. No, it's, it's a great topic. And one that I, you know, in all these podcasts, I don't think it's ever come up. Scott Todd, do you want to take the last word on this? No, I mean, I think, I think we pretty much have said it. I mean, like, you know, I, I, I mean, I don't see that it's, I mean, I don't, I don't have a, I don't, I don't include that as part of my county research, right? Like it, the, the county will do the, do its job and, it will, it will happen over time and I've never had it stop me from, from moving forward. So I don't know. I don't see it as a, as an event and where these things pop up, a quick phone call can probably solve a lot of problems. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I do want to just segue into that we're streaming live on Facebook. And so we always want to stop that live stream because we want them to actually download the podcast and listen to Eric's tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the stream now, which is stop live stream. Okay, done. So Eric, are you ready? (laughs) Sure. <laughs> Don't be so enthusiastic about it. I can come up with something. All right. While you're coming up with something, I just want to mention to all the listeners um, that Debbie Lou, who just started flight school, just did her first deal. Scott Todd, why did Debbie do a deal so fast? Well, De- Debbie's actually been uh, been mailing in uh, in advance of flight school, so I think like on session two, she was she was already asking for uh, questions on due diligence, which I had to slow her down a little bit. But she was she was already swimming uh, before we, we 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 shut the gun right the starter's gun. So great for her. I'm glad she uh, she's got that first deal. There's nothing like that first deal, and it's probably the uh, the most exciting like. I don't know, fifty, hundred dollars, whatever the down payment is you'll ever make in your entire life. Yeah, it's there's there's nothing like that first deal. And I think the confidence going forward that that proof of concept for so many people is so important. Um, because 
you know, flight school, the toolkit is sort of this leap of faith. Yeah, it works for all of us, but how do we know it's going to work for me? And I definitely would recommend that, you know, you learn more about flight school, the toolkit, coaching, just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with Scott, dude, buddy, bossman, or Mike, the Zen master, Zeno, and, uh, and certainly learn more. Um, by the way, Scott, I just saw on Facebook, Jeffrey Pierce closed his first deal on drum roll, please. Go figure. And moto.com. Nice. Great. It's amazing because, um, Mark, I was looking, um, uh, I was scanning through the database with uh, the developer for, for LG Pass the other day. So I was scanning through with him and uh, we, we, we were looking at the sources, <coughs> excuse me, the sources of sales. And uh, it's quite interesting to see like the source of sales that people are, are choosing. And it uh, was really cool because you'd see like Facebook, Craigslist, Craigslist, Facebook, Landmoto, right? So, you know, it, it was really kind of cool t- for me to see uh, that people are leveraging the platform the way I intended. Um, it's funny too, because not only do we see the sales going through there, you know, we also see, you know, we also get, we get a phone call yesterday from a uh, land.com rep, you know, the lands, you know, all sure. of them. and uh, they wanted at last check, they wanted $660 a month for 50 listings, which Landmoto is unlimited listings, uh, nowhere near $660 a month. And they said, well, you know, uh, if you want to get the cost down, there's some great ways we can do it. We can, uh, we can go for 30 listings. We can go for 20 listings. Okay. That's all cool and everything, but it doesn't solve the problem. And guess what? Even 20 listings was like $250 a month. And uh, wow. one of my, one of the members on my team set, sent me a note cause they got a copy of it as well of the pricing. And they're like, man, Landmoto is a bargain. And I'm like, well, you know, it, it is, depends on what you want to pay per month, but um, you know. Yeah. All but good. Scott, the, sc- the scary thing is if I'm a public company like CoStar, I might just buy you out and now I'm getting 660 bucks a month <laughs> well, and I'm taking you know, and these people have, have no other word to, no to go. go. Well, well, I'll tell you that, I'll uh, tell you that uh, I do think I that, do they, think that they, they the market, the market uh, in terms of, you know, all of the platforms that they own. And I mean, they're, they're massive. You know, they, they own LoopNet. They own Apartments.com. I mean, you, you really, if you're looking at anything with real estate, I don't care. They own uh, Buy, Biz, Sell. So they, I mean, if you're looking at anything to do with uh, listing platforms, they're, they're awesome. And in fact, Mark, you and I were talking to uh, a podcast guest, um, I don't know, two weeks ago, and we talked about CoStar. He talked about CoStar as being a, a tool is on the, the due, due diligence conversation. And, um, you know, the, the thing is, is, is that CoStar also has, you know, mapping tools and other stuff. They are, they're massive, you know, so for, for, for Landmoto, you know, they, they look at it and it's like, yeah, we got, we got what we need for right now, but we'll see, you know, it's, it's Landmoto is definitely uh, something that uh, there's, there's no profit in Landmoto for, for us. It's really just a labor of love that we're taking and, uh, and, and taking every revenue dollar that we get and reinvesting it back into advertising and, and promotion of the site because it's just leading to more traffic. So. No, I love it. The Jeff Bezos strategy, but you know what happens. Hey, maybe one day we can be as doing that. Yeah. Keep doing that. Maybe I'll have instead of, uh, instead of like those little devices, I can't say her name because she'll like wake up. Maybe we can have like uh, a land Lexa land Lexa. Lexa. Well, you you know what we could do is uh, like REI, make it a co-op of all the land geeks. And then everybody takes a share and that way we protect you. Like you get, you know, your, some of your equity out. But then we're also not getting swallowed up by CoStar. I mean, you know, this, they're creating a monopoly. Yeah, there you go. That's a good That's idea. Idea. Yeah. Turn See, sometimes. Co-op. Yeah. Some, sometimes I'm I, I think outside the box. Hey, man, maybe I, that hit in the head helped. Maybe, man. Like, and your wife said no more bike riding. She must like. She must really love you, man. No, <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> look at this face, Scott. How could she not? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're. 
still waiting for uh, we're still waiting to see these pictures of of bulky Mark. Oh gosh, they're never coming out. All right, let's change the subject. Let's go to Eric Peterson. Eric, what's the tip of the week? All right. Um, I was looking at this website here called remindthem.com. Remindthem.com. It's kind of built around, at least their example is built around the idea of doing like a webinar or some kind of online event. Um, You know, collecting a phone number and sending a text message to remind them that their event is coming up. Um, But, you know, I was kind of thinking, you know, something like this, you know, incorporated into my website or something and collecting a phone number, which is often hard to get. Um, And then using some kind of a a text message to remind them about deals of the week or what have you. Um, So getting them to opt in up front when they give that phone number and utilizing a tool like this. Um, I don't know, just something I was kind of looking at the other day. Um, Haven't done anything with it, but there it is. Wow. This is really cool. Um, and it's free. Yeah, I think it is. I don't know. Uh, it's saying it's free. <laughs> All right, remind. Click the button below. I already click a complete setup. Your marketing just got to use simply set up a campaign and start reminding people about your promotions. Huh. Very cool. That's a great tip. Tate Litchfield, do you like it? I do. I'm trying to figure out how to like use it more. Seems well, I mean, I, I know what you could do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got some ideas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that, that deal of the week. Mm-hmm. They opt in for it and boom, they get the text. Um, Jeannie, how would you use this? I have to look at it. I, I uh, can't see it at the moment, so I'm going to look at it after we're done. You know, I hate to give Eric Peterson another compliment <laughs> on this podcast. It, it's, it's more painful than, you know, the, the current wounds I have on my body. But another great tip, Eric. Uh, Berlin, Aaron, how would you use this? Um, I don't know. It looks like – it looks pretty cool. Um, it looks like a great little way to uh, add to the buyer's list. Um, maybe an integration of the website would be cool. We'll have to take a look at it. Um, I do want to, uh, for people who are listening, um, that you want to check out Remind Them and not Remind, um, because there is an app called Remind that schools use and teachers use to talk to parents and so forth. So don't get them mixed up, um, but Remind Them. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. It really does. I think an integration would be, we'll have to check it out closer. Yeah, yeah. Scott Todd, I, I could see the wheel spinning. You've got this, you know, super intense look on your face. I, I got I to gotta figure out how to uh, incorporate this better. Yeah, I mean, because it is a fine line. Like, you don't want to annoy, right? But you also know that you're going to have almost 100% uh, open rate. So what can you send that would be innocuous enough to your customers. You know, it's like, it's like permission marketing on, on text um, to do that. I mean, look, I'll I'll tell you what I I, I like is uh, the way that Bed Bath & Beyond does it, you know, once a week, 20% off, right? I haven't opted out. Like why not? So maybe a coupon, um, and then, you know, maybe you have them opt in somewhere and then it, you know, it, it redirects them to the coupon or the coupon code that they can then unlock for a deal of the week or something like that. Um, there's a lot you could do with it and be creative with it. It's just, you got to be really careful with text because you don't want to look spammy. Um, get really ugly. Oh. Scott just had a, a weird thing with his mic there. All right. Well, I thought this was a, a great podcast. I want to thank all the listeners. I want to just remind you, the only way we're going to get Jeannie, the go-giver, 
Morum to keep coming on this roundtable podcast is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot to support at the We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Again, today's podcast is sponsored by flight school. Just go to the land forward slash training to learn more. All right, Jeannie, are we good? Yes. Awesome. Tate, are we good? Yep. Eric? We're good. We're good. Bearland Aaron? Great. Awesome. Scott? We're oh, good. you're on mute now. We're good. All right. Well, let's just let's just do this. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom ring. Not bad. We drug it out a little long today. I feel like we 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 just gotta say it. Like, let freedom ring. You think? Yeah. Okay. Be easier timing. It would be easier. So just let freedom ring. Like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. Just like boom, boom, boom. All right. Next one. Let freedom so, ring. Let freedom ring. So, T and Jeannie, we're we're all on West Coast time. What's going on for lunch? I don't know yet. I don't gotta know. go inside and talk to the boss lady. Nice, nice. Uh, when do the when do the the in laws get in town? Tonight. I thought it was tomorrow night, but it's tonight. So it's I get nice. an extra twenty four right. hours with them that I wasn't planning on. <laughs> Phenomenal, phenomenal. <laughs> you know who gets that extra time is Aiden Daisy. Yeah. And that gives you an opportunity to go out on the strip with Allison, party like rock stars, no cares in the world because the grandparents are taking care of the little uh, I wish it were that simple, Mark. I really do, but... <laughs> Yeah, er- Eric awesome. smile. Eric's awesome. got this like knowing smile going as well. Yeah, it is going to be. I'm thrilled. It's going to be super fun. <laughs> I, I know, I know, and uh, I'm really, really excited for you guys to get that nice break and that bonding time, and it's special. You know, family's so great. So special. It's great. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Uh, I'm going to go do some wound care and uh, make a little dartboard in the garage Mahal with Tate's face to get all my resentment out for all the pain and suffering. Is that wrong, Tate? Is that, that's, that kind of felt mean. It kind of felt too far. You know, uh, I'm not going to hold it against you. I just would have thought your parents would have taught you how to ride a bike better. I mean, it's not that hard. <laughs> You know what? I can do the Dr. Evil thing with that pinky. <laughs> well, I do the other hand. Oh, the other hand. Okay, okay. Yeah. You know what, though? Tate, you do bring, a good, bring up a good point. So when I was a kid, I got hit by a car in the neighborhood biking. And ever since then, I never biked. So I just picked up biking, like, hmm. you know, a few years ago. Like, what, two years ago? Late to the game. So I'm really late. And I guess I ain't so good at it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, it's time to I, retire. I you're right. And then I see all these other people biking, like all around here, and they're not wearing helmets, they're not wearing gloves. I'm like, how is this possible? Yeah, uh, it's. I think it's okay for you to take a graceful exit of the sport. You know. All right, you won't. You won't judge. No, this is a judge-free environment. <laughs> all right. Well, get I just a wanna... three-wheeled bicycle. Don't get a three-wheeled bicycle. Just you get a basket just on the back and everything. <laughs> Mark, what, what? No, no, like the that. Amish. No, 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 Mark. No, 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 no. That's too geeky. Too geeky? Yeah. <laughs> That's All too right. senior citizen. It's not geeky. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting up there, Eric. I don't know. All right, fine. <sighs> you know, I could just do yoga as low as 58 a month for 39 months mark it's not bad get the bike for no money down look at the different packages you know what this is this is really interesting marketing um everyone should check out one peloton.com just to see how they do their marketing um 
this could apply to land investing in a way, right? Although we do discuss like, you don't want to give too many options. I think four options is probably too much. I think the three is the most, but I don't know. What do you think, Tate? I like, I like the way they set it up. I just, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we could do like a low, a low monthly, you know, at whatever interest rate. And then it includes the plat map, the GIS map, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, whatever else, right? And then the second one might be a little higher uh, down payment, a little higher monthly. And it includes um, like the actual like GPS, like physical thing, you go out, they're already plugged in, go look at your property kind of thing. I don't know. There's a lot, there's a lot of things you could do with it. I just like the way this is set up. It's clean looking, good marketing. It is. And I do like the fact they have hands-on professional setup because um, I have literally no other skills in life except for land investing. Um, it's, it's pretty sad. And clearly... <laughs> Bike riding was just too much for my, <laughs> for me. Awesome. All right. All right. Thanks everyone for putting up with me. See you guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye.